I think the housing crisis has um, another aspect about it that, that needs to be underlined and certainly is an energy issue. Uh, when people uh, not being able to afford anything in the in the area in Westchester, let's say, for example, or or Rockland or Fairfield, they start to move out, and of course the housing industry was happy to oblige and build all kinds of houses all over the landscape, and everybody got excited because it's sprawl, da 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 da, and uh, yet people bought them and were extremely happy to be able to afford a huge house on what they thought they never could afford. Of course, required a car, and it generally was a big car too—a very inefficient car, generally speaking. Because after all, you have to drive through all those roads, and they could be snow clogged, and so you have to have a—you know—you get it. Well, <laughs> you know what happened with the subprime? Now, not all the, not all of those houses were subprime for sure, but there were quite a few that were, because people get carried away on what they can afford on one of the kind of deals that the banks were offering at the time. So now you have. Again, we've got a lot of perfect storms here, and this is another perfect storm. You have a house that's way out there that you may not be able to afford to get there because of the cost of driving, the distance. So uh, this, this is a very, very serious problem. There's no transit out there. I mean, no bu buses are pretty rare, uh, and there you are. And you've got an inefficient car, you could change the car, but that's an expensive thing to do also. Uh, so I think it's very significant that where the big buildings are going are in the cities, where all transit um, oriented. Uh, and they, I mean, really big ones. It's astonishing the kind of size of uh, a skyscraper. You didn't quite associate that word with Westchester, but that's what we've got. That's right. So we are, we're getting there. We sure are getting there. And some people have said, look, we can see these things for miles away. Well, that doesn't bother me, because I know that's not sprawl. Mm -hmm. Sprawl up, sprawl out, or sprawl. You're going to have to make a choice. Where are you going to sprawl? So, well, that's where it's going. Unfortunately, a lot of those are luxury. And I wish they'd start sprawling up and making affordable. affordable. I haven't heard that word a lot. And I think we've got to really, the builders really start, have to start thinking about how to appeal to the general public. And when I say affordable, I'm meaning the general public. I'm not meaning any subsidized housing, just... Right, the uh, workers. Are yeah, people that run the place, right? <laughs> uh, so this is another, uh, um, definitely an effect of higher gas. And as I said before, this is not the top. Uh, people in the that are just uh, totally hooked on cars, which includes most of us, <laughs> pretty large, me too, even though I can walk a lot of places where I live, thank God. Um, I had to take a car to get here, though, <laughs> half an hour drive. <laughs> oh, well, we're glad you did. Um, we certainly, we've covered a lot of ground here today. Um, to, to read more, though, about the housing issue, you can check out Maureen's column in the Business Journal or online. Maureen, thank you for joining us today. I'm Karen McBride. Thanks for tuning in.